The lab values that we have available now are an e-group or a CHEM7 or whatever that is, a BMP um, on the ISTAT. So we get obviously the BUN, creatinine, um, typical electrolytes and glucose. Uh, we do not, however, get troponin or BNP, uh, brain uh, natriuretic. We can, however, get those. They're just additional slots. Um, but we have to have a justification for it. So how helpful do you think, uh, let's start with BNP, since that's a little more relevant to this discussion. How helpful do you think that would be, and how would you use it? So for those who are visiting the patients after they were discharged from the hospital, I think a BNP would be helpful. Uh, because you could see the trend of how the patients are behaving. Patients with congestive heart failure due to systolic heart failure, they usually have an elevated BMP, certainly above 100, maybe you know somewhere between the 400 and the 200 range. Uh, it's a good marker. I wouldn't do it every day, but uh, if you think that your patient is moving into the right direction, uh, it would be good to confirm, you know, like a couple of weeks after they have been out, you check a BMP, and if you prove that they are in that range before 400, below 400, they're probably fine, and then you know that where you are at that point, you're good with the diuretics, and if you have a good renal function, then you're good with the diuretics. So it will help you to freeze therapy. Uh, to escalate therapy, you should really go more by the symptoms that the patients are having. But I would say that if you're getting above 800 in the BMP, then maybe giving an extra diuretic will be Even in the helpful. absence of symptoms. Even in the happens. absence of symptoms, I think, is just an okay. indicator that the intracardiac pressures are elevated. Uh, so I would say 400 to 800 is probably gray zone. And these are arbitrary numbers that I'm giving sure. you. This is not any guidelines. These sure. are things that I'm recommending out of it's my of experience. Gestalt. So if you, but if, in, even in the absence of symptoms, if you're above 800, you probably should be increasing the diuretics. And chances are that if you do a methodic physical exam, you're going to, have to see an elevated JVP or some ankle edema or maybe listen to crackles. Uh, troponin. So let's talk about troponin in the, the context of your CHF patients as opposed to, so we're just going to arbitrarily say, we go into God mode and say, this is not an acute coronary event. Um, what is the... You get an elevated, say you have a troponin of one or 1 1.2, you know, just a little dish. Yeah. What's the, how do you, what do you do with that? Well, you know, so the, so the troponins are just a marker of myocardial injury. They are not as specific for the mechanism of the injury. If you get, if somebody uses cocaine and they develop coronary spasm uh, and you check their troponin levels, they will be elevated. If somebody gets into a heavy alcohol intake and has some degree of injury into the heart muscle from that, the troponins are going to be elevated. If somebody gets a viral uh, infection, troponins are going to be elevated. Patients with a stress-induced cardiomyopathy, troponins are elevated. Patients with intracranial bleed that have hypertension and develop those deep T-wave inversions because of the adrenergic rush, probably the underlying uh, uh, pathophysiology is the same of the stress-induced cardiomyopathy. They have an elevated troponin. So congestive heart failure, stretch in the heart muscle from the increased pressure that we have been talking all along uh, will cause uh, some troponin elevation. And some patients with congestive heart failure have some chronic mild elevation in the troponin level. And you know anything that tilts them over will raise the troponin. I would say that usually is no more than 1.5, usually it's no more than two. You know, if you're seeing values of three, four, then there may be underlying Probably coronary else. artery disease. Pulmonary embolism may raise your uh, troponin. So it's not a specific for uh, coronary artery disease. It's just a marker of myocardial injury. And you can certainly see it in congestive heart failure. I don't know how helpful it would be for congestive heart failure not management. Sure. Okay. So even in the acute coronary syndromes, for you as a paramedic, I'm not sure the troponin is very helpful, unless it's somebody who had have have been having symptoms for a while. Mm. So if somebody who tells you that they were having pain yesterday, they thought it was gastric reflux, and then today they're short of breath. So if the troponin is elevated, then you know that they're very elevated, you know that what they had yesterday was no GERD. It was Pretty sure GERD didn't yeah. bump. Uh, Correct. Troponin. It should have increased the troponin. To, you know, to. Well, you know, we, we talk about where troponin comes from. You know, it's part of the, the actin and myosin, the binding. Where does BNP come from? From the what? left atrium. So, so, so the left atrium is, is, is a sort of a hormone. It's a peptide, but it's a sort of a hormone that has diuretic properties. So it's, uh, when the pressure in the left ventricle is elevated and 
that gets transmitted to the left atrium. That causes a stretch in the fibers of the left atrium. And it's like an endocrine organ that responds to that stretch by releasing this BMP, which is meant to make you pee, basically. Uh, so it's a sort of a weak uh, diuretic and a vasodilator. So it's just a surrogate of that uh, system of homeostasis uh, that is in the body that when the, the left atrium was perceiving elevated pressures coming from the left ventricle, it was a time to diurese. And that's what you're measuring. Kind of a, uh, a built-in, evolutionary built-in sliding scale Lasix. That's pretty cool. Sort of, yeah. Well, I think this has been a fascinating discussion. I, I know I've enjoyed it. I think our uh, chip paramedics are going to enjoy it. And I think our 911 paramedics are going to enjoy it. We've covered an awful lot of uh, material, and I think an awful lot of material that we don't typically cover, in uh, certainly in paramedic school or in paramedic yeah. continuing education. Uh, I would certainly really like to thank you. Um, oh. I think we got a lot out of this. Uh, you took a lot of time, and thank you very much. My pleasure. Uh, at your service, whenever needed, we'll be there. Thank you.